Hey everybody, how's it going? I thought I'd talk about a type of projectile problem <clears throat> where we have something rolling horizontally off of a elevated surface. In this case, we have a penny um, on a table and it rolls off the table. What we want to figure out is what is the speed of the penny when it lands? So our final goal, our final destination is what we would call the actual speed. Uh, and that requires us to figure out how fast it's flying, but also an angle. So this one is a little different. <clears throat> this one is kind of the opposite of what we've done so far, where a lot of times we'll, we'll know what the starting speed is at the angle, and we use that to figure out our Vx and our Vy. In this case, we actually have to figure out our Vx at the end and our Vy, which will actually be down at the end, and then also put those together then to figure out the combined speed. What would their actual speed be? So <clears throat> first, as always, draw your picture. So here I have my penny. I'm just going to be real. There's my table. There's the floor. Here's our penny. And we know that if it's shot straight sideways, it's gonna kind of create an arc like that, right? Okay, now what do we know about this? We know that the penny on a table is 1.1 meter high. So from here to here is 1.1 meters, okay? And we know the penny has a speed of 0.7 meters per second. Now what direction is that? That's key. Think about that, if a penny is rolling, it's rolling sideways off a table. So our speed is straight sideways. Now, what type of speed is that? That's a Vx. So our Vx equals 0 0.7 meters per second at the beginning. <clears throat> now think about that. If our speed is only straight sideways, what's our Vy? That's right, our Vy is going to be zero. Okay, so that gives us the starting velocity components at the beginning. So let's create our X and our Y chart. Okay, and we know now, I'm going to move my picture over here. Let's move it to right about there, I guess. We know that our V1 for the X is this one right here, the 0 0.7. And we know our Vy is that one right there. Okay, let's list what else we know. We know 1.1 meters. That's how tall the table is. So first thing you got to ask, is that an X number or is that a Y number? Well, that's an up and down, so it's going to be a Y. So it's going to be our distance. Now, careful here. That number is telling you how tall the table is, but what we're really trying to focus on is the penny, right? We're really trying to say, what is the penny? Okay, so the penny is going to be falling downward. So how do we indicate down? We have to have that negative number on our distance. So our distance, our dy, is gonna be a negative 1.1 meters. Okay, now, we don't know, the previous question, A says determine the range of the penny. That actually is not really needed here. Okay, our final question, remember what we're looking for is what is the speed on impact? So we're trying to figure out when the penny is landing, okay, we know it's probably going to have a velocity that's pointed down to the right, some sort of angle like that. Are trying, we're trying to figure out what is that velocity, okay? What is the angle of the penny when it's doing that? And that's what we're looking for. <clears throat> so what else do we know? Well, we actually know something about the velocity in the x direction when it lands. What is the velocity in the x direction when it lands? Well we know that acceleration in the X is zero, right? Because there's nothing slowing down the penny in the side to side if we assume there's no air resistance. 
which means we know the x velocity when it lands, 0 0.7 meters per second. Okay. We can also figure out the velocity when it lands for the y, because we actually know some more information. We know the acceleration in the y direction, don't we? We know it's caused by gravity, and that means it's a negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now think about this. We have a d, we have a v1, we have an a. So let's look through our equations. Okay, what is the one piece that most of our equations have that we need, but right now we don't have it? Time. So we got to figure out time. Okay. <clears throat> so to do that, we're probably going to need something that has these pieces in it. So again, looking at our equations, we have that equation that says distance equals V1 times T plus one half times a times t squared. Okay, well, we have a lot of that for the y. We have a v1, zero. We actually have a d, negative 1.1. Again, to make it a little easier to look at, I'm not gonna put the units in there. So zero times our time, which means this part here is gonna cancel out plus one half times our acceleration. Don't forget that negative, negative 9.8 multiplied by time squared. Do a little algebra. This stuff here is all gonna have to get divided by to get rid of the numbers to that side. It's not negative. This one's negative. Okay, so on my calculator, I'm going to do that. And I get this right here. I get that t squared equals 0 0.224 and a whole bunch of other decimal places. Now, that's not my final answer. Remember, we've got to take the square root of that to get rid of the squared. So do that. And this is what we get for our time. We get that time is equal to 0 0.47 seconds. Okay, well, that now is what we use for time. And remember, that can go on both the x and the y side of our chart because time does not have a direction. Okay, so what do we do with that? Well, we need to know the velocity of the marble in the y direction when it lands. That's a piece that we have missing. Now let's look at our equations again and say, okay, how can we find the velocity when it lands? Well, think about that. This is like a v2. So we need an equation that has v2 in it. And we do have a good equation that has v2 in it. We have v2 equals v1 plus a times t. Now that we have a v1 and a and a t, we can solve for this. Let's do that. v2 equals 0 plus negative 9.8 multiplied by 0 0.47. Type that into your calculator. And we get this number here. v2 equals a negative 4.8. 6, 0, 6. Now, that is the velocity of the marble in the y direction when it lands. So, now we got to do <clears throat> a little bit of trigonometry, a little bit of Sokotoa stuff. We're going to make a triangle here. We know if this was our marble, we now know that the up and down direction of the velocity is down. We know its length negative 4.606, or we'll just say positive 4.606. And we know the x portion of that is 0 0.7. Okay, well, if you kind of made a triangle, da -da 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 -da, we then would say, okay, where that comes together is the actual speed and the actual angle of our penny. 
and the lengths of those sides are the speeds that we calculated. Okay, so if we're trying to figure out this length here, this is a Pythagorean theorem sort of question where we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? So you can just pick a side for your a and your b. It doesn't really matter. It's both the same. It gives you the same answer. So I'm just going to pick the 0.7 as my a, 4.606 as my b, and those are going to equal c squared. So go through, start calculating. 0.7 squared equals plus 4.606 squared equals this number here. 21.71 equals c squared. To get the squared away from the c, we've got to take the square root of that. So c is going to be the square root of 21.71. And we get this number here, 4.67. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, that is your velocity. That is this piece right here. Now we gotta figure out the angle. So you have your triangle, right? Here's the right angle. This is the angle we're looking for. <clears throat> Couple of ways you could do this, okay? Um, if you have an angle, this side would be the opposite. And this side would be the adjacent. What's opposite over adjacent? Tangent, okay? so. We're going to say tangent of theta equals opposite 4.606 over the adjacent 0 0.7. You're going to have to do the inverse or the tangent negative 1 button. Okay? And when you do that, do it of that fraction, here's what you're going to get. I'm going to take tangent. In fact, I'll just do this on my calculator so you can see how I'm doing this. For me, I'm going to do the second button and then right there. And you're going to do 4.606 divided by 0.7. And you get this number here. 81 point, I'm just going to round it two decimal places, 81.36 degrees. Now i got to think about that for a second. Okay. 81.36 degrees. That's this angle right here. How do we really want to show that? Because if we think of 81.6, 81.36 degrees, we're thinking 0, 90. We're thinking something that's like that up and to the right. But this is actually a negative. Okay, so our angle there would be two ways to show that. We could do a negative 81.36 degrees. Or if you think about this as an X and a Y, we're actually looking at this angle right here. So it would be 360 minus 81.36 degrees, which is this number right here, 278.36. So our final answer here is 4.67 meters per second at, you could say, 278.64 degrees. So that was a little harder. I wanted to make sure that we go through that together. If you have any questions, I know that was a lot, please send those my way. If this video was helpful for you, please do the like for me. Um, if it was not helpful, you know, thumbs down. Uh, and I'm always welcome for some constructive criticism. So in those comments, leave me something that I can use. Thank you.